You might wonder what this is all about. About 44 years ago, I wanted a fireplace that sat in the corner. They didn't make such a thing. So I had to cut holes in two sides of the house. You can see this is the corner of the fireplace that's sticking out of the house. And I had to build the platform it sat on at the perfect height for some beams I got from work. Some of the first housing projects just north of Penasquitas at the beginning of Rancho Bernardo when the job site was over. I mean, all the houses were built. He said, okay, this Saturday, you guys got to get everything out of the boneyard because we got to scrape that area off for the next housing site, for the next phase of the housing. So my buddy and I, we just took all kinds of lumber, all kinds of people. There weren't there not many people there. Here's the other part, I had to box it in. But that part over there got weather beaten, so I tore it all apart and redo it. And uh, so we brought home all kinds of lumber, headers, two by fours, four by twelves, open beam ceiling beams, which I used for the bottom, and a regular old header for a sliding glass door that goes out into the patio of the back of the house. So anyway, I had all this good lumber, so I had to design it. So there's my corner fireplace. So I had to decide on how far out to come by going to RCP and getting those big black slate tiles, stone tiles, whatever they are. I had to get four of them. So I had to come out a certain amount of distance and the height had to come out and match this beam, which is the open beam ceiling, real tight wood. I had it sandblasted and it's real tight wood. So the sandblasting didn't take too much wood out. And you just put the two tiles and then the outside tiles cut the corners off. And one use one little piece of it over there so very very few scraps and now the fireplace is set back in the wall and the hearth that old cheap header was soft wood and you can see how the how the sandblaster just ate the soft part of the wood and just left the grain which made a a real neat header or hearth or whatever you call it and this is back in the days of nail-on screws, or nail-on, no screw-on, so I built a chase up through the roof with, it had to be fireproof, so it's a layer of drywall on the inside, then airspace, and then a layer of drywall outside. So I have a two-hour chase going up through the ceiling up through the attic and out through the house. And so I, you know, I, just my hammer and nails and drywall scraps from work and voila, it, it was done. And so, got me a real nice corner to corner fireplace. Big, deep, it was the biggest one they had. And I did all the math to figure it out and cut the holes and kind of have to, header it out to support it but the the main part of the house is still there so it's just a about a 12 inch wide hole over there and a 12 inch right hole over there or 14 inches wide or whatever and then we did this paneling later on and we flood we've been known to have water all the way up to the bottom of that to where we wade in here and stand up on that with the fire and keep warm and right where I'm standing, you know, the water's about eight inches deep. 
sometimes more because of the weird flood place we live in. I'm low man in the neighborhood. And then uh, the back bedrooms dropped down. So I had to build a subfloor because water in there was like almost up to the light switches. So that used to be flush right through there. So I built this up eight, 10 inches or whatever. And then back here in the bedrooms, had to build this floor up about 12 inches. And you can see I can, I can almost reach, you know, the ceiling's only about seven feet or less. You can change the light bulbs off a little stool or somebody with a stretch can do it from the ground. So that was the project. And now I gotta, I tore it all apart. Now I gotta go put it ah, back together. But this is my weekend up at grandma's. So I have to go out and tear down. We're having a party this weekend birthday party for the middle granddaughter oh I wanted to show you something let me get back in the house sorry for all the panning this buck nine light buck door has a story to it and uh, that uh, papa my oldest granddaughter had that made for me it's got the names of all the grandkids and all the great grandkids over and over again. So that's all the grandkids and great grandkids. Seven grandkids, two great grandkids, and uh, the Lawson right there, her mother is pregnant do and around my birthday so then there'll be three great grandkids so we just love to come in here light a fire on a cold winter day and sit on that and have a good old time <laughs>